Well, good evening or good afternoon or good morning to everyone, depending where you're at in the world. This is day two. I'm broadcasting live from Los Angeles. And yesterday we talked about free will is an illusion. And so today I want to elaborate more on this and uh, give you a broader perspective and explain things more in detail so it makes more sense to, to you what I'm talking about. The, excuse me one moment, you're muting everyone, all right, great. So, all right, so let's talk about a couple of different things first and kind of explaining what I mean by that and how it works and how you can tune into this and shift your consciousness. The, when we're born, pretty much the first two years, we're not identified with the person. We're not identified with the uh, imaginary person that we believe that we are. So around age two, what happens is identification takes place. That uh, the child begins to really identify with their body and their mind. And that's what they call, they call it the terrible two. Uh, around two, two and a half years old, this identification happens and the child becomes a separate entity. And, uh, and that's where it starts like grabbing the toys and it's cat, grab a toy from another child and says, no, it's mine. And even though they may not be interested in having that toy, but uh, they become possessive of things. That's because a shift has happened from completely not being identified to um, completely being God and totally just being a part of the oneness. And then their consciousness merges into an identification of an ego-based person and the sense of separation kicks in. So that's what happens around that age. As we move on our, through our experiences and also through our five senses, it's fortifying the idea that you are someone, a person separated from everything else. And therefore, you got your own free will and you can make your own decisions, what to do, where to go, what to say. And as a result of that, when you're making a mistake or you're committing uh, an act, uh, whether it's a crime or you did something wrong or whatever, you have to pay consequences. Same as when you're accomplishing something that we call it good, then you're being encouraged. So, and this continues and keeps going. Everything else around you and your surrounding, including the society, is going to support this idea, support that you are a person capable of your own decisions and you have your own free will. And as a result of your free will, your whatever you, your actions, you're responsible for the consequences of your own actions, whether they're positive or negative. So basically you have no reason to doubt this and you never question it, never ever question this until you get on the spiritual path. And maybe if you're lucky, you come across this information, which is very, very rare because most majority of the information out there is not about this. And, and very, very few teachers have come on this path where they've got the bullocks to talk about this. And because it takes a lot of courage to come out here 
and to tell you that you don't have free will on a pseudo spirituality time that 99% of the schools of spiritualities are fortifying that you have the power and you're the author of your own life. You're writing the script and you're the one who chooses what to do. And all these different schools are really encouraging you to go on that path. So all of a sudden somebody comes and says, that's all nonsense and it doesn't exist. So <laughs> that's a lot of, that's a big thing to say in face of a world global movement that is really uh, supporting the idea that you as an individual have the power and you can write your own script and what to do and what to accomplish and blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> so in my opinion and my experience, my direct experience is I was lucky when I came across this information and it did resonate with me. It doesn't resonate with a lot of people in Advaita Vedanta teachings and any sort of teachings that is talking about merging your consciousness to fifth dimension and is talking about and, and encouraging you to look into this path, to pay attention to this idea, to be open on this concept or idea or way of thinking or seeing things, that there is no individual and there is no free will, and you're choiceless on this path. And inviting you on this, on this way, it's not something which is very attractive. The majority of the herd in spiritual arena are not interested in this. So this doesn't really sell well. So it's not a good marketing teachings because most people are not interested in buying it. They're interested in what is telling you that an individual, you can empower yourself and you can get whatever you want. So, which that teaching is about fortifying your individual sense of separation. So it's the opposite. And of course, as you can see today around the world, it's got a massive market. Most people are very attracted to that and very little people are attracted to this teachings. So we're here together and obviously you have come in this direction or you're interested in hearing what I have to say. Not necessarily you may agree with it, but something inside you has triggered you and something inside you keeps bringing you back or you're curious or whatever, or you're checking it out. Now, I have no desire and no intention of convincing you of what I'm sharing with you. So, I want to make this very clear because I never try to convince anyone to look at things the way I look at it and I see it. Everything I see and I have come to understand, it was as a result of a direct experience. It's something I'm experiencing daily, moment to moment. My teachers did direct me in this way and they pointed out, but I had to come to this realization on my own. It's otherwise it's not worth it and it's fake. And something I discovered on this path is you can't really fake it. You can fake it for a short period of time, but it's gonna come out. It will surface eventually. <clears throat> 